game time energy you got, was You come in hot. <laughs> I'm ready. Hey, right into the starting lineup. Talk about let's go. <laughs> but we got another treat, not just Wozni Lambrey. Excuse me, Lambrey. Excuse me. We Who got else? Israel hey. here as Miami's own. It's me. All right. Yeah. It would have been a lot more fun to have the New Yorker and the Miamian after Miami closed this series out, that would have been a lot right, more right. fun. I'm shocked that you guys extended it, but we'll get to that. This is debatable. I'm Dominique Fox. You know who they are because I told you already. Alan what would have been fun, Dominique, is if Pablo was still here and we can make fun of him about those sorry <laughs> Sixers. So <laughs> why exactly do we need Pablo to be here to make fun of him? Oh, well, that's true. It just would have felt better to yeah, see his face true. cry a little I'll, bit. I'll FaceTime him later. All right, Alabaster, what you got? All right, guys, uh, did the 76ers blow their chance to win this series against the Celtics? Yeah, it feels like it. Yeah. It sure feels like it. Like, the Celtics yeah. were atrocious for much of this game. They were doing all the things that anyone who watches the Celtics gets annoyed by. Like, Jason Tatum was taking difficult, long-range shots that weren't going in. Uh, Jalen Brown was getting stripped every time he tried to dribble the ball <laughs> amongst other basketball players. Marcus Smart was taking shots early in the shot clock. It was all the things that you expect. And somehow at the end of the game, Jason Tatum woke up and took over. What do you think, Izzy? I'm just so curious. Like, so you've got a Boston team on your home floor with their best player, I wouldn't say melting down, but just looking at the numbers, like not performing, right? Because there's a difference between guys who have like choked under pressure and you can mm -hmm. see it happening. Or just missing. And I think Jason was just missing. I don't think he, I mean, he'd been through this before. He'd struggled in the finals. It wasn't all collapsed on him. So I thought he was okay. But you have that happening in your home floor. And the Sixers looked like the panicked team. <laughs> like Joel and James Harden didn't know what they were doing exactly. Like, and look, I went back and started looking at some of Joel's numbers in, I would say big series, but he's only been to the second round, in second round series uh, <laughs> that he's performed. And man, he has not been good in some of these mm -hmm. important games. Like you go back to him against, uh, man, there was a couple, uh, you go back to him against the, the, the Hawks, oh, the a Hawks. team that they beat in seven games, the Hawks. Uh, I'm sorry, the Hawks beat them. Remember that year that the Hawks yeah. beat them? That was mm -hmm. Those last two games, he had eight turnovers apiece in those last two games, okay? Last year against Miami, yes, he had a broken face, but he came back and was bad. He was bad against them in those last couple games. And frankly, um, in those games against uh, Toronto and, and, and Kawhi, the very last game, six for 18, a uh, bunch of turn four turnovers in that game. So I'm wondering if Joel, like that's the one thing that was going through my head, which one of these two guys is going to get that reputation for not coming up big in big games. Tatum closed out huge, 16 points uh -huh. in the fourth quarter, four threes, and just further proof that he was just kind of missing early on. But Embiid, even though he's hitting some of those mid-range stuff, like even toward the end of just kind of hanging out on the perimeter, the last game where it seemed like Boston was just kind of hand, like was was uh, before can't James, keep James Harden sort of- I can't even say that. I mean, bad, in those moments, bad is I'm a wondering stretch. if he's just, no, I'm wondering if he just does, he's not himself. Let's put right. it that way. He is not yeah. himself. I mean, not calm up. in those situations. Uh, he seems like he's flustered. And I would, I would say that a guy who's never gotten past the second round and is really nervous about it and has won the MVP, I think he, yeah, I think it gets in his head, and I think he's, he's kind of choking a little bit. Yeah, I think it's hard to say that the Sixers didn't blow this one. Um, they played well enough, especially defensively. Um, to beat this team tonight. Uh, to to Dominique's point, I don't think Joel Embiid was bad because if you watch the Celtics' offense, who was actually bad, horrible, um, <laughs> in moments, there were times where they just didn't want to look at the basket. And those few times where they were brave enough to take it in and try to score on Embiid, he was just swallowing everything whole. It was kind of crazy to watch guys like Tatum and Brown just not even want to try layups, try floaters, try anything in the vicinity of Joel. So they just settled for jump shot, jump shot, jump shot, jump shot. And a lot of them heavily contested. I think they played well enough defensively uh, to win the game. I thought they had some nice things going on offense, especially in the third quarter, uh, where they had they would just isolate and beat on the block, 
Mm -hmm. excuse me, on the left baseline. And he would just straight up dare a defender to come. If they came in to help, he'd whip it out really quickly. He was abusing Horford. Uh -huh. uh, Robert Williams couldn't do anything with him. He hit a, a bunch of his nice little 12-footers, pull-ups that he likes to take. But this is the disadvantage of having a big guy as your best offensive player right. at the end of the game. They can't just take the ball at 30 feet and start creating. Somebody has to get them the rock. That's but exactly the reason Joel's yeah. hanging out. 28 feet like yeah. it wasn't like before in the fourth right. quarter where he's there on mm -hmm. the elbow catching it and then going to work and getting that little jump it was uh, it was it just seemed weird and like yeah. I, i'm gonna give him credit for defensively just for being who he is that's why they were afraid to put up those shots but it wasn't like he was just absolutely dominating this game for any stretch outside of a little bit you know in that third quarter maybe on the defensive end but 26 on 9 of 19 shooting with four turnovers that's not what you want in a closeout game from the MVP. And I understand, you know, his knee, whatever. But, yeah. I mean, he's done it. He did it in the last game or, or the game before. And so, uh, to me, it was a very disappointing performance from him. And that's not even looking at James Harden uh, as 4 for 16 and 0 for 6 from 3. But you kind of expect that. His knee, already, whatever. Point, right? You're going you to hit the 7-foot super athlete <laughs> with his knee, whatever. Like, I, I guess maybe I'm grading on the curve because his knee, with whatever, does feel like a real deal to me. And it does feel like he's laboring. He does not look like himself. Giving all those caveats, like, it's hard for me to pin this one on Joel Embiid. I hate that your center is, the, is supposed to be your closer. That's why James Harden's there. So mm -hmm. if we want to blame somebody, we can look at James Harden or, or Maxi because those, like, it's just the way basketball is played. Toward the end of the game, when all your sets have been figured out, now it's time for your best player to be your best player. And rarely, I can't remember much in history, even in the days of Shaq, but mostly because he couldn't shoot free throws. Nobody's looking at that last possession like, hey, let's get it to the big fella on the block. They're looking at the guards to make something happen. So, yeah, I, I am going to have some sympathy for his knee, whatever, because he's really big, and it seems like it hurts, and that brace is That man had 67 points the last two games, and he got to the line 26 times the last two games. His knee, whatever, <laughs> was fine in those two games. It should have been fine enough in this game. And so, look, I, I understand everything. Like, Israel, there's the just I know. <laughs> he just... <That's> just <laughs> <laughs> there's just something you can watch the guys play and you know that there's just something off about them they're they're reacting over overreacting to things they're not getting to their spots they're panicking it just early on in this game you saw that from Joel and then he got into that rhythm he got into a little bit of rhythm they got in the ball it's just a little mid-range it's money every single time it just didn't keep happening and I don't think that's necessarily a Joel thing it's probably more of a team thing but if I'm Joel Embiid and I'm the MF and MVP like I am standing on that elbow and I am demanding the ball. I don't care what the play call is. It's not going to start with me at 27 feet. It's going to start with me there. And I'm gonna, and like you said, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a play call. Just get me the ball. Do we all think they're they're done for real? No. no. It's the Boston no. Celtics. Come on. <laughs> I mean, you can't think this team is done against the Celtics. Yeah. Uh the Celtics have not buried a single opponent in this run. It's just not the nature of this team. They just don't go out and kill people. Even the super limited Brooklyn Nets last year during their finals run, the the uh, point differential of that series was that of a seven game series, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's not like they blew the doors off the Nets um, to sweep them or whatever it was uh, yeah, last year. That, that 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 was that wasn't some like oh we just kicked their butts up and down the court every single game. So no, I don't think they're over. But to to Izzy's to more Dominique's point, I understand what Izzy's saying. It's like Embiid, you're big enough, you're good enough, you have enough perimeter skills that you don't need to catch the ball three feet away to make something happen. At the end of the day, man, um, guys like James Harden who have been in the NBA forever. Doc Rivers, who's supposed to be some great head coach, they got to, at, at a certain point, design some shit, calm these guys down yeah. um, and, and make this happen for Joel, right? Like, at a certain point, somebody has to grab the reins of this game. And to be fair, guys, we're airballing shots. You know, yeah. P.J. Tucker, yeah, my yeah. man, I love P.J. Tucker. And Everybody if they're going to have that. him out there, he has to take those shots. But he bricked all of them. Y'all all just scared of P.J. Tucker. I've never heard anybody, <laughs> player, <laughs> media, or anybody, I've never heard anyone ever criticize P.J. Tucker without I, first saying, hey, I, I love, 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 love P.J. Tucker. I want him in hard. a foxhole with me. Because he plays hard. Because he However, plays hard. <laughs> he plays hard. Got the best 
like uh, the best PR people in the in the industry because he is intimidating. I think it's not just the media; it's also the players. I've never seen a player not say they love PJ Tucker. Yeah, no, I, I criticize. Him. By, by the way, by the way, I, I love PJ Tucker too. Just so y'all. I criticize him without saying I love them, but it was the criticism was his pregame uh, shorts are too short. Like <laughs> they're too short. <laughs> just a little. He needs to shoot around in some longer ones. Um, I got a question for you guys. You guys remember Robert Williams, by the way, uh, the, the Boston thing, just the last note on that. I remember when that used to be a tough place to play. Like yeah. now all mm. I can remember is guys going in there and dominating in big games. LeBron, wow. uh, Joel wow. Embiid, James Harden, like uh, that. Steph Curry, oh my goodness. Wow, wow. Steph, I forgot. Right. Steph, yeah. wow. Yeah. Is, he, that, that is, 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 is he doing his Miami thing? Is this all what's right. happening right here? It it's a Miami. Situation okay. Um, I yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't want to say that, that the producer, producer of the show agreed with me that Jimmy Butler is significantly better than Jason Tatum, and it's not close. He is. I don't think that's. I have. don't think that's debatable. He's way better no. than Jason Tatum in the playoffs. That's you. that's not a thing. <laughs> that just happened. That really? just happened. I, I mean, I feel like that opinion just became something that was acceptable. I think if you look at um, Butler's numbers, maybe you could argue that it was before this playoff run. It would have been true, but nobody would have said that. <laughs> before I, a month ago. I would say since 2019, which um, the, his last season with the 76ers, there's never been a playoffs that Jason Tatum was a better player than Jimmy Butler. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right. I'm just saying, I don't know that people would have said that if it wasn't yeah. for that 50-point game that he had in this this general run. And also, yeah, they wouldn't have said that, for the uh, except for the fact that he keeps proving it over and over again. So, <laughs> my thing, Dominique, if, J if Tatum was playing, like, at least a little bit below what his yeah, right. MVP caliber kidding. season yeah. has been, you'd be like, well, yo, MVP-ish, adjacent-ish kind of player at his age is incredible. But he's way below his regular season standard. I well, got a question for you. He's been With, so bad at the beginning of all these games anyway. Sorry about that. Right. No, no, no. It's fine. In the beginning of games, he's been bad, right? But my question is, what is his go-to shot? What is Jason Tatum's That's signature a, shot slash shot move? from the left wing, eh? <laughs> it's, it's kind of a shot fake step back which is not a good but it's almost always a three right yeah. and that's not yeah, the option you want way. late in games it feels that way and and like i'm watching this game and i'm like there's no shot that exists that jason tatum can just get the ball and get to against any competent one-on-one -on -one defender he's not going to get to the rack sometimes he gets all the way to the rack and his body control is yeah. like he wants he's to keep like, his arms long so that they swipe for the ball and maybe foul him, but that's about all he's got when he's going to the best. He, he's like that wind monster thing outside of my barbershop. <laughs> Whenever he gets to the basket, Aww. that's what it looks like. They're just knocking him off of his square, and when he throws, he's literally just throwing it up. Right? I mean, so dude, he used to post up more. Like, he used to have that Kobe part of his game, right? Did they just not do that anymore with Missoula? I just, I just want to, um, we not, may not have the picture ready, so maybe they'll have to put this in on post. And I think Jason Tatum's arms are what David Dennis wishes his arms look like, but <laughs> Niang is actually what David Dennis's um, arms look like. Oh. The minivan George Niang. <laughs> Somebody was at the game with a bang bang Niang, Niang sign, and <laughs> I had just determined that they must just come to the game with a bunch of signs, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, nobody is like, I'm gonna make my one sign. And it's going to be a Niang. Everybody needs a niche, Dominique. You should know that um, oh, yeah, working I in do. media. We all need a niche. And apparently, Niang fandom is that niche for certain Philadelphia Sixers fans. It's like That's fair. It's like, I want to get on TV. But if I have a, a Tatum <laughs> sign, then it's going to be 13 other signs I'm competing with. Yeah. I just got to hope Niang gets hot in the third, baby. And I'm going to hold up my bang bang sign. <laughs> I got one question because I see the check mark pushing us along. Um, can Robert Williams still jump? <laughs> Is he still okay? Because like, I remember last year he was on one good leg yeah. blocking shots from the corner, like just coming out of the paint and going Zion on people and blocking a three pointer, or at least contesting it. And now he, he's not. He's just not getting Yeah, up he just like doesn't that. feel as intimidating. Um, I thought the, the the decision to insert him into the starting lineup was a smart one because mm -hmm. they were getting smoked on defense, specifically by just simple 
Joel Embiid, James Harden pick and rolls. They were just getting the best shots on planet Earth in a pivotal playoff game. And so I thought it was smart to bring him in. But, yeah, he, he's not as imposing as he was last year. There were moments against Golden State where he was making all the difference. Um, obviously, they ended up losing the series. But he hasn't been that impactful, not in this playoffs, not yet anyway. Yep. Boy, save Joe Mazzulla's job. He'd have lost that game. It was really hard to stay in town. All right, what you got, Alabaster? <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so, out west, Andrew Wiggins has fractured rib cartilage. Anthony Davis was wheelchaired out of a game with a bump to the head that's not been ruled a concussion. So, going into game six, are you still confident that the Lakers will win this series? Hell no. Confident? Hell no. I'm not. Um, AD, it's all it comes down to. AD, any team that you talk about, if they are without their best player, then no, I'm not confident. I know that it seems like he's going to play, and I'm not here to, to laugh at him for being uh, street clothes and hurt all the time, although I'm not going to get in the way of Chuck and, and Shaq making me giggle. But it's, it's unfortunate what happened to him. It's a fluke thing, but it doesn't feel like a fluke when it's always the same guy. So, like, I, it's hard for me to be super confident in the version that we're going to get. He was wobbly, and I don't know. Like, I, I, it didn't look like a super hard hit, but you mess with your brain. I don't know what's going to happen. So, I was very confident. And also, the Corgi said, nah. The Corgi said, we're going the other <laughs> direction. <laughs> So I no, just learned talking. about this Corgi who's predicting he's a very niche Corgi. Like he's just <laughs> predicting this series. That's it. I guess. That's it. He and so to... he picked Did he pick the Warriors for game. I, he I picked the Warriors to come back in, from three to one. Wow. Yeah. They got him predicting the whole thing. Wow. That is yeah, 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 yeah. He, he picked okay. the trajectory of the series, not just the winner, but like, yeah, they're going to go down three, one and the Lakers are going to, you know, they're going to give Steph his vengeance and let him have his 3-1 back. But what I do want to say about the question was that still would imply that I ever felt confident that the Lakers yeah, were going to yeah. win this series. Um, I, at the same time, I think at home, uh, I think they'll probably get a better whistle. And I think that'll make all the difference. Like how the refs call the contact in this series because – the Lakers are the much bigger, more physical team. So if Golden State's not allowed to just foul them, it's going to be hard for them to guard them going downhill in the painted areas. And, you know, look, the refs are human. I, I feel like yeah. while they were in San Francisco and the amount of hemming and hawing Warriors fans have been doing about foul discrepancy, even though they're the 30th best free throw yeah, shooting team work. in the league is in, and the Lakers are number one. Um, and then both teams are just, you know, yeah. upholding their standard. Um, I think the refs might have got um, influenced by that. So, and in L.A., I think it'll be different. I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just a, a dumb basketball fan. I know what clutch minutes are, but how do you determine a clutch playoff game? What is what is the definition of that? Or is that just Ooh. a stat that we made up? Un I, I under mean, five know. points with under oh, five minutes left. that go into oh, the yeah. clutch Oh, got situations. you, got you, got you. I thought we were, we were projecting that this was a clutch game, and I'm just <laughs> stuck like, all right, so what defines a clutch game? Is it just an odd game. game? Listen, One, three, five, and seven. Listen, Those are the clutch ones. Dominique, clutch I, I feel you because we all got PTSD from the clutch gene <laughs> era. I, like, oh, we're man. all still reeling from the, uh, the stupidity oh, and ridiculous that was the questioning of LeBron James playoff oh gosh, medal. It was ridiculous. It I was once crazy. told that guy that the clutch gene was not a thing and I was never back on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Poor career decision on your part, Izzy. <laughs> I shouldn't have done it live there. Don't you steer us back to the topic. Let us meander. Well, well didn't we just do a whole topic about how Joel Embiid doesn't have the clutch gene? <laughs> That, that's exactly we just, we just did it without saying clutch gene. So, we did. see, I would never say Joel B doesn't have the clutch gene. I would I just say that this. I think that there's something about playoff defenses in the half court that make him way less effective than he is in the regular season. I don't think that he's necessarily playing less than what his standard is. I think the standard in the playoffs on offense are much higher. It's just way harder to score. I think when you see guys like, say, I don't know, a Nikola Jokic in the playoffs yeah. score against any defense, no matter mm -hmm. what, I think that says something about his offensive game and the way mm -hmm. that it translates and travels. I, I just don't think Joel's, as an offensive player, 
specifically, I don't think he can be as dominant as he is um, in the regular season I'm in the need, playoffs. I'm going to need you to stop because you're trying to get us all fired <laughs> right now. We got we got a Lakers topic, and somehow we are not That's talking right. about the Lakers. It's like, goodness, That's man. Right. We That's got right. LeBron and the Lakers, and we still, and Alabaster sending us back to the previous topic. No, so no, like, no. It's Alab I, I have to defend myself against Alabaster because I will okay. not say that I used the clutch gene argument. You did. You just uh, explained for, it without I, saying I, it I, as, what, as a definition. What I'm saying about Joel Embiid, if we want to get to the source of it, I think he has been in this organization for too long. I think he has been failed over and over again, and I think his teammates have failed him over and over again to where he gets to the point where he's just like, if I don't do all this by myself, we're not going to win, so get me the damn ball, and he starts mm, freaking out. I fair. mean, it's it's not it's not clutch, Gene. It's just he's just, tr I'm, I guess, trying to do too much, but really it's just he's been failed, and he just wants to do it all himself. I hate, to, I hate to, to tell you this right now, Izzy, but Alabaster edits the show, so... <laughs> he just he just gonna have you out there looking like you said the clutch gene was a thing. So I, okay. to answer the the Lakers question, I was extremely confident that the Lakers were going to win this series when they were up three one, and it only took <laughs> one game, one chop to the face for me to lose all my confidence because at that point I was like, I'm watching these games, I do not see a way that they can win that the Warriors can win three in a row. But then I was like, yeah, they were they won one game. And now, let's say AD is not full strength. That explains how they win two games. And then we got a game seven. And yeah. you know what they do in game sevens? They throw out the record books and nothing matters. And you just go out there and ball. Anything can happen. Then we're dealing with, with NFL playoffs. So we're dealing with um, NCAA tournament odds at that point where the better team doesn't necessarily win. So I think it was hard for me to imagine them getting to a game seven. Now that I can see a yeah. path to a game seven, I feel a whole lot less confident about all of this. So it's all on how bad Joel, or excuse me, how well AD can play in this upcoming game. To me though, game four sort of ruined all that, all that possibility because yeah. I saw what it looked like for them to get what they wanted essentially out right. of Steph and still not be able to come through. And, you know, whether it be the one-on-one -on -one versus AD late, whether it be Draymond's turnovers and LeBron reading the plays and announcing the plays before they happen, like, it, it doesn't feel like they have that magic left in them um, against this team who, again, knows them well, has a great defender in the middle and, you know, a couple of good per uh, perimeter defenders. And so um, am I putting it past the Warriors? No, but, like, I don't know what confidence level is. Like, I'm more than – if it's a pie chart, I'm, like, 51 to 55, like, whatever, a little bit more than half. Like percent this. confident that the Lakers will win it, but it's just like you know when a team's at a ninety-eight percent chance of winning a game oh, and then man. they lose it. Well, they so, just lost it. I mean, so it the, happens. The man I, doesn't I, I, believe I, I, in clutch genes, but he's coming out here with the ninety-eight percent. No, that is such a sports a sports TV cliche too. Yeah, I will say nothing. this though: if the Warriors are without um, Andrew Wiggins, Wiggins, that is big. very close to a death blow yeah. um, to all that the, th the things they want to do defensively. And offensively, because one on defense, outside of Draymond, there's just no athletic wing that they're comfortable playing. Yeah. Kerr doesn't like Kaminga in the playoffs, mm -hmm. so he's not playing. And so Wiggins is, Wiggins is huge on the boards. Yeah. Wiggins is the guy that's guarding LeBron on an island. Wiggins is a lot. He's switching out onto guys when he needs to. He's giving rim protection when he's being asked to. Like, he does a lot for them on defense and then on offense he's a guy who will make an open shot will create one-on-one -on -one, is you know somebody who finishes well in transition like he's their only bit of like actual athleticism elite yeah, nba athleticism and so if he's not playing man whoo that's, it's that's crazy how boy. little steph needs around him yeah, like he needs a competent defender and shooter. You know, Draymond well, Green two. obviously disrupts. Two. Right, no, no, Draymond Green disrupts everything. He's a killer. He's what you know, but you don't really need Gary Payton the second is your answer in the starting lineup. A six foot what four guard. It's just yeah. like just don't screw it up. Just don't mess it up for him. And uh, Draymond just had one of those games in the last one. He Wasn't it? messed it up for him. Two games I mean, guys, ago. When... Just think about Sorry. this, though. Sorry to interrupt. Just you think did. about this. Think about how the Warriors looked for 25 games without Andrew Wiggins in the regular season. <laughs> that's, all, that's all you need to know Bruh. about what his absence might mean for this game.
I, I didn't have any great analysis. It just dawned on me that we are all um, incredibly worried about AD's brain when he kind of got chopped in the eye. But wasn't it two games ago when Draymond's whole head bounced off yeah. the ground like a basketball? <laughs> yes. He ain't going to protocol or nothing. <laughs> that was <laughs> crazy to me. Nobody was talking there. about uh, he's holding the back of his head, yeah. walking off the floor, and it's just like, no, just get right back in there. I like, laugh. That happens in a football exactly. game. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. I laughed with Bomani about this uh, this morning, just about how differently we feel about concussions depending on where exactly they happen. Yeah. Like, if, we, if you see somebody get knocked out in a street fight, Oh, it's all good. The internet is having jokes. You see somebody get knocked out in a boxing match, you better get up. You get somebody yeah. get knocked out in football, though. We all clutch our pearls, and I'm guilty no, of it too. Fair. Football, we like. Oh, oh, it's fair. Oh. Also, I think Draymond, he's got that pig skin in him, Dominique. He's yeah, got he, a lot of football play. I, hey, hey, hey! I seen that tape. <laughs> Either he was out of position. Or he, he don't got no football player in him. That man was running the raggediest tight end route <laughs> at Michigan State. Them things was raggedy. You couldn't have Homer Simpson. Wow, <laughs> wow! Route running hate. This is this is new levels of Draymond hate. Uh, I've I never love seen Draymond. this. Oh, you're right. He doesn't I get in and out of his breaks right. yeah, fluid I mean, enough. With wow. breaks, you know, Dominique, I'm gonna send you tape of me running my favorite route, which is a post corner. See if uh, you can give me any tips it. on it. Nah, you look like you get so open every time. Route. Every yeah. time. Look sharp. Anyway, Draymond Green's routes were were round and soft, like David Dennis's <laughs> shoulders. It's just an inside joke for me and David Dennis. That's all. All right. Soft shoulders and really long, wavy arms. Is that what he has? I'll show you the picture. Okay. Actually, I don't have to show you. He posted it on the internet for us all to see. Alabaster, what's next? You know, I, I, it was a sled selfie too, is he? You're sitting on a sled, a weighted sled. Like, I don't, I don't know. Is he, sitting is, on a sled. It, it's, yeah. worth, it's worth sending it to Izzy. But anyway, what's the question? Um, last one. Uh, do you think Jalen Brunson will have anything left after playing all 48 minutes in game five against Izzy's beloved Heat? I, don't, I do not want to get in the way of this. Uh, I don't know which one of you guys want to start. Go for it, Wes. It's, it's, a, it's a Nick question. Yeah. It's not a Heat question. I, I, I mean, I think he'll have stuff left in the tank. It's just it's hard to say whether this will be enough. Like, just think about what it took. Can we quit? Quinn Grimes freaking hyper extended his knee, got a gutsy steal, like one of the most incredible defensive toughness plays I've ever seen in my life. Got the ball back, whatever. Tim still left him out there. <laughs> like to me, that just speaks wild, to man. the to me that just speaks to the Ooh. desperation of the team that's yeah. involved. They are desperate. And the, the idea that Quentin Grimes is a 48-minute player for this team shows you that, like, they don't really have much left to throw it out at the Heat. I think even in this game, game five, which they managed to um, not throw away at the end, where they're forgetting the entire reason for being of Duncan Robinson. It's like, guys, the white boy's out there to shoot. Exactly. Like, it, this shouldn't be hard <laughs> to understand. Um, the fact that they still couldn't even figure that out, I don't think that bodes well for them going forward in the series. I saw my man Dunky shoot a runner, and I was like, no, don't do that, Dunky. Don't <laughs> do that, Dunky. Get, get your ass back out there behind the arc. Bro, his yep. season was going so bad, he had to stop potting. It, it yeah. like he just quit the pod. He was like, "Yeah, I'm off for this pod." If I Duncan is just he's hit I, rock bottom and he's just playing with absolutely no nerves. It's I like, "What? It. I'm out here. Let's just do it. Let's shoot this runner." Bang. <laughs> um, Quentin Grimes, ten minutes in game one, twenty six minutes in game two, twenty two <laughs> minutes in game three, forty two minutes in game four, all forty eight in game five. This is the Tibbs option: is just Jeez. go and. Hit. Like every time I think That's of insane. Tibbs, like Kevin Harlan line, with no regard for human life, because he does not have any. It's just whatever I need to win this thing. And yeah, they just don't have enough. Like Jalen Brunson, I said this from the beginning of the series, like the Miami Heat is not going to let a 5'11 guard beat you. 5'11 oh is Oh my deep, goodness. Like, they're just not gonna let him beat you. I mean, he's- The complete I, dismissal of- I love of, him. I love him, but he's not gonna, he's got, he needs help and his help is you know due to shoot step back threes with 18 seconds left on the on the shot clock like they're yeah, just not going to be disciplined Julius enough Randall. you know rj barrett can have a game and they'll win a game you know if everything else is right you know quentin grimes can have a game and they'll win a game but consistently not good enough um and 
I say all that, and I have like again, it's the same level of confidence. Fifty-one percent that the Heat's going to win. To be clear, I've seen way too many times the Heat lose terrible games at home this season, and I know the playoffs supposedly different, but look at the shooting in this series. It's to be clear, to I, I would like to what to, it was. to make sure that you're clear about. Not only does he have a guy who shoots step back threes, he has an All NBA forward to help him. So. He's got a lot of help there. No, it's the same all, person. All, it's the same oh, person. Oh, oh really? Yes. Oh, really? Is it the same person? If that man played in Indiana or any other, you know, city wow. outside of New York, he would not wow. be all NBA third team. Wow. And he would not be compared to Chris Bosh, which was the utmost disrespect <laughs> last year. Get out of here. <laughs> Izzy, Izzy, you are um, verging on my level of disdain for a lot of um, Julius Randle's game, especially in the playoffs. But, you know, he's what they have, though, right? Mm -hmm. They can't play OB top in 40 minutes at the Ford. It's just untenable defensively. And again, another guy. Defensively? Dominique. How about offensively? Whew, another guy, open. Dominique, who I love, right? I'm an OB top <laughs> fan. I love, love him. I love him. Love I'm an OB top However, you fan. But, yeah, defensively, he's just uh, not in. You know, he's not an offensive hub either. I got to say, I'm a little surprised that. You two, one from New York and one from Miami, neither of you is, is, has any confidence in either of the teams from the places where you reside or used to reside. Can we get this and, straight and for a second, home. Dominique? Yes, please, I am not, I mean, this is no offense to my man. I am not Parakeet Cortez. Like, oh, yeah. I am an established <laughs> journalist for right. 23 <laughs> years in the business who happens to live in the city where one of the greatest NBA teams play. That does not make me a major homer. I just spit the truth okay. and happen to give it a little bit more attention if it needs it. But it's not homerism, okay, to say Bam Adebayo has been sort of, I, look, I, I think he's been, he's been slandered and I think people need to take that back with Bam. I, I, the idea that you wanna trade him for anybody that can score it's just mind boggling no. because you don't really understand that it's not always greener on the other side when you've got a guy who is willing to do everything for you, everything for you on the defensive end. And he's not even a great rebounder. Look what he's done these last couple of games, just working his ass off to get these boards because that's what they need from him. I think he's been getting a lot of crap lately and people need to apologize to Bam Adebayo when he gets to the conference finals. Uh, on behalf of people, I'm sorry, Bam, you deserve more love, I guess. Coming from an objective school. journalist who is not a homie <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, this is the, it feels like we all agree that this, I was expecting that one of you would say that this was a series of consequence, um, that there's a chance. I, I, every time I want to like write both these teams off, I then look at the fact oh, that gosh. the winner of this is going to have to play the Celtics or the 76ers. And to be fair, I don't have any confidence in those teams either. They just have you, better you players. Can. I have a ton yeah. of confidence in Miami Heat game planning against anybody, but I have confidence in them game planning against Joel Embiid. And yeah, I do think that everything is happening the way it's supposed to because the Miami Heat tomorrow after the game against the Knicks will be the first team to make it to the conference finals as it should be. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, <laughs> is he's killing me? I, 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 will, I will say this: um, I, I, I'm I have a bias in the sense that I thought the Knicks were going to lose in five games the last round. I never really had a huge confidence in this group. I, I think they've been playing above their heads this entire postseason, to be honest. And that they've even forced this to go to a game six. Um, just want to repeat a stat that I saw that since Tibbs. Um, became a coach, there have been six NBA series where the team with home court lost in five games. Tibbs has lost three of those. Wow. Okay, he's authored three he of those. And then they, some very special and playoff then they turned the four where the team with home court advantage lost in five games. But, you know, I think they'll come out and they'll play hard and they'll give it a go. But they're just so much worse than the Heat to me. So we got um, spe specifically in half court offense. And so I don't think they, they got much to, to, to offer going to me, forward. Because normally the more talented the team in the NBA is better. And I don't think that we look at Miami as like an uber talented team. But I do think that Miami is much better. So we all got Miami advancing mm -hmm. at the nearest opportunity. I have a tips question. Um, 
He's no, got to he be. He does not have any regard for human life or their knee cartilage. <laughs> well, what's the deal with the hair? Because he's got to use more gel, like per 36 strands of hair, than anybody else in the league. Like, that's a lot of gel to keep. Like, does yeah. it float? Does it move that much if he doesn't plaster that thing down? Or I'm sorry, those, you know, few strands down or what? Yeah, he might need to go to Istanbul. I got a couple <laughs> of homies that told that me in Turkey? Turkey, they've sort of. Yeah, perfected out. the hair replacement joint. Tibbs, he's rich enough. He he should probably just sp go spend a couple weeks in Turkey. I heard it's beautiful. I've never been to Istanbul, but I heard it's a great time. So he needs to go down there and, and, and get that hair replacement. in Turkey. Yeah, I, I, I would not suggest anybody go to Turkey. I've seen them transplant videos, too, and I've heard Turkey <laughs> is beautiful also. But uh, well, that's where Erdogan is, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, he'd be wild. I mean you he know, be wildin'. He, he hasn't gone in his cancer. Tibbs hasn't. He's good. I think he's straight. I don't think they they put a fatwa on him yet. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to go. He's just got to say a few bad things about in his cancer. He'll be in and out. He'll be fine. <laughs> What's up, Alabaster? So, Izzy, are we saying heat and six against either the Celtics or the 76ers <laughs> in the next round against the soft, <laughs> bummish teams who have more talent but are going to get – ground into dust by the gritty Miami Heat. Is that where we're going? Depends gritty. on the squad. If it's the Sixers, I got Heat and six. If it's the Celtics, I got Heat and seven. Jimmy's going to go hit that big three on their floor. Oh, to win. Yeah, I think they beat the Sixers um, for sure. I, I just have no, no faith in James Harden, who I've nicknamed the Redeemer, because every time I diss him, he has a great game, but then he, ends, he follows it up with two more <laughs> Terrible games, thereby redeeming my take. Um, oh my I think he's, I think he's way better. I think they're going to be, they're way better equipped to deal with um, Philadelphia. The Celtics, I think, will beat them eventually in a long, drawn out, sloppily played at time series. I think the Celtics will inevitably get back to the NBA Finals. Uh, Tyler Hero might be back in the Conference Finals, though. I'm just hearing some things late I mean, in the Conference who, Finals. Is that, that going to help you know, is that, I mean, is that a good thing? Big, in the bubble, he did well against the Celtics. So saying, <laughs> Yo, you this know, guy he is He kind of owns man. Marcus Smart a little bit. <laughs> Is he, man? Is he got a lot of Mike Ryan in him, man? I'm telling you, man. Uh, this is crazy. Gosh, I have to. I have to play this part when I come on this show because it's been, you know, it's, it's just been sort of made for me and I'm prepared for it. I'm equipped. Uh, well, well you. thank you. Thank you for being a key character on this midday soap opera that we call Debatable. You are the star of today's episode, Izzy. Midday. I appreciate it. Is it is 10.52 p.m. I am no, it's tired not. as it's, hell. It's noon. It's noon. And we might need you to stay up depending on how this other game goes so we can record something about that and tap it on, tag it onto the front. Somebody got to stay up with me. Somebody got to stay up with me. Alabaster? Anybody? Anybody?